I know you are saying amen back at home. I know you are saying aloud amen. I can hear you by faith. And I know all is well in the name of Jesus. Our dear viewers, welcome to our today's service. Part three of what I title, Enjoying Financial Breakthroughs in Hard Times or in Hardship. We started last Sunday but one by saying that we are living in hard and trying times. And uh, we said, despite the fact that these are hard times, the word of God has the promise that even in famine and destruction, in Job chapter 5 verse 22, that we shall laugh, meaning that others might be suffering, but as you continue trusting God, as you continue trusting the word of God concerning the covenant of exemption, the covenant of supernatural works of God, you shall not suffer. Shall we pray then? Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before your holy presence, bringing all my dear viewers, both on TV and on, on, on Facebook, Hados. Jehovah God, I know that they are expectant, expecting to hear a fresh word from you. Thank you for the manna from heaven that is coming to reach your people shortly, for I know that you've spoken to me and you have prepared me for your people. Once again, I hide myself behind the cross, and I pray that I shall speak the oracles of God, the very word of God from heaven. I refuse to speak the logos. I, I agree to speak the rema, the very word of God, in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray as I speak, let the power to heal, let the power to deliver, let the power to encourage the discouraged be made available today. In the mighty name of Jesus, I take power and authority against every territorial spirit that could hinder the smooth flow of the word. And I decree such a spirit is bound and paralyzed and defeated. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I also take power and authority against the demons of witchcraft kingdom. And I decree in the name of Jesus, as I speak, your people shall hear me very well. There shall be no manipulation on my end, neither shall there be manipulation on their end. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Have your way in this place, and so shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. My dear viewer, I bring to you the part three of what I title enjoying or having financial breakthroughs in hard times. We know that we are living in hard times, but we thank the Lord God for his promise stands forever. We started last Sunday by mentioning seven secrets. You know, we, we, we were able to mention four by the grace of God. I do a quick recap of the three that we mentioned on last Sunday so that uh, we may continue. We said secret number one for you to stay financially afloat eh, is that you must have what we call full obedience towards God. We said eh, that obedience is the foundation the foundation of the kingdom law of life. The foundation, it is actually the first kingdom law of life, obedience. That's why wherever there was crisis in the Bible and people obeyed the word of God, Wherever there was, you know, crisis in the Bible and people obeyed the word of God, they always enjoyed the miraculous, the supernatural. Hear me, it was, it was early in the morning in Luke chapter 5 that Jesus was just walking by the lake and he saw some fishermen that had spent the whole night, eh, you know, fishing and they had caught nothing. They were washing their necks and they had taken their boat to the shore and, uh, you know, Jesus was teaching and he asked Peter, may I use your boat? And immediately he agreed you know there was there was there was there was that the miraculous that happened because you know you know Peter was told by Jesus immediately
quickly, immediately Peter gave out his boat. Jesus told him, cast your net into the sea. And when he did exactly that, you know, you know what Peter said? He said, we have toiled the whole night. Before I forget that, it is very important because it shows obedience. He said, we have toiled the whole night. Nevertheless, at your word, I shall cast down the net. And the Bible says, in, you know, in that Luke 5, 5, and Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And the Bible continues to record the supernatural, the provision in the midst of hardship that happened, that there was too much fish, that the nets were breaking and the boat was sinking. I came to decree as you continue obeying the word of God, there shall be provision in the midst of calamity. Number two, we said foundational righteousness. You know, in second in second Timothy 2:19, the Bible says eh, that the foundation of the Lord stands sure with this inscription on it eh, that the Lord God knows them that are his. Eh, and then let everybody that names the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. So that is what I call foundational righteousness. Eh? Giving is good, tithing is good. But if you are doing that and you are still a compromised believer, you may never enter the dimension of the prosperity of the righteous. That's why we talked about the righteous. Go and tell the righteous. Go and say to the righteous in Isaiah 3.10 eh, that it shall be well with him for he shall eat the fruit of his doing. Hear me, it is important to know that uh, righteousness, that foundational righteousness, uh, will guarantee your provision uh, even in calamities. Number three, uh, we talked about focus on God. We said uh, that you should uh, you should focus on your God. The Bible says in Psalm 34 verse 5, uh, they looked unto him and they were lightened. If your focus is on your problem, your problem might never go away. But if you remove your eyes from your problem and you focus on the Lord, uh, he will make sure that he, he helps you overcome your challenge, even provide for you in hard times. Uh, hear me, hear me. It was in Numbers, it is in Numbers 21 uh, that there was fiery serpents in the wilderness and God instructed his servant Moses that, that you, he should you know, construct one bronze, bronze serpent and lift it high above on a pole and he, he was told tell the people whoever is beaten by the fiery serpent he should lift his eyes and, and look at the, and, at the bronze serpent and whoever did so the Bible records that they were immediately healed you should not let your problems over overwhelm you. Hear me. Life is not about solving problems. Don't go to church to solve problems because life is about pursuing destiny and you can only pursue destiny when your focus is on God. Therefore, anyone who focuses on God, even in calamity, he shall enjoy divine provision and that's why I decree today by the word of God that you shall enjoy divine breakthroughs in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then number four, four, four we said, we talked about about favor that you should find favor we said favor is abundant it is available it can be acquired but it must be activated and we talked about how you activate favor by mercy and truth and getting the knowledge of the word of God that the recap concerning what we said last Sunday today I give you the secret number five the secret number five on what you are calling on what you are calling uh, the seven secrets remember there are seven the seven secrets to staying financially afloat even in the times of or, or in even in the times of challenges or calamities right now and this is what I call flow in the spirit flow in the spirit flow in the Holy Ghost I want to begin by saying that the Holy Spirit is the custodian is the king taker of all the heavenly resources that we have on earth. He's the caretaker. Hear me. Jesus is already glorified. Seated at the right hand of the Father. Making intercession for you and for me and all the saints. But God also is seated in heaven forever on his throne with the 24 elders bowing before him and the four wonderful creatures bowing before him. The seraphims and the cherubims. But hear me. The, 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 the person of Trinity that we have on earth right now is the the Holy Spirit. That's why when Jesus was going, he said, I shall send you a helper. I shall not leave
leave you alone. He will, I'll send you a helper. He will remind you of all things that I have taught you. And that is why the, the presence of the Holy Spirit is the one that keeps the, the church of Jesus Christ going on and going on. Can I also dare say this? It is the presence of the Holy Spirit on other that to make sure that the earth is not destroyed by the evil powers of Satan. If the Holy Spirit is withdrawn from the face of the earth, the things that the enemy would do are beyond our imagination. Talk less of corona. Talk less of earthquakes. Talk, talk less of tsunamis that we see. He would do dangerous and terrible things. But because the Holy Spirit still hovers over the universe, the Holy Spirit is still present as the third person of Trinity. The enemy, the, there is an extent unto which the enemy cannot go. That's why even in the life of Job, when the enemy was tormenting Job, God said, don't touch his health. Don't touch his spirit. There are places and areas in your life I want you to know from today where the enemy cannot touch. And that's why it is important to walk in the spirit. The Bible says in Romans 8.14 that as many as are, that are uh, led by the spirit, they are the sons of God. So when you talk about flowing in the spirit, it is making sure that you are walking in the spirit. In the, in, in the word of God in Galatians 5 16 the bible says that walk in the spirit so that you may not fulfill the last of the flesh hear me when we talk about flowing in the spirit we are talking about you being connected to the one that is the custodian the caretaker of everything that we have under the sun hear me the bible says in psalms 24 verse 1 that uh, that that uh, the, the earth and the fullness thereof belongs to our god even a cat on a thousand hills hear me god is the owner of everything that we know in the book of haggai the bible says he owns gold and silver and can i tell you something all those are under the control of the Holy Spirit they are under the control especially for the believer that's why you need a personal relationship with the Holy Ghost that's why you need to walk and walk and talk in the whole with the Holy Ghost hear me even Jesus himself when as the second person of the of the trinity he had to get the help of the holy spirit that's why in acts 10 38 the bible says how god anointed jesus christ of nazareth with the holy ghost and power so that uh, he went about doing good healing all those that were oppressed by the enemy because god was with him if jesus needed the holy spirit the bible says he had the holy spirit without measure he was filled in the with the holy ghost how much more do you need him you need him and not only do you need him you need to sustain a flow so that you are flowing in the holy ghost in the morning you are flowing in the holy ghost in the afternoon you are flowing in the holy ghost in the evening and as you continue flowing in the holy ghost what happens is that uh, you your life cannot be dry you will continue enjoying a uh, divine provision even in the areas of hardship even in the areas of scarcity and lack my dear viewer when you talk about the Holy Ghost in the Bible he is depicted as the river of God in Psalms chapter 46 verse 3 and 4 they are about let's see Psalms 46 uh, verse 3 4 they are about the Bible says though the waters thereof roar and be troubled though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof talking about contrary situations hear me the only cure of contrary situation is that river of the Holy Ghost it is that river of God the Bible says there is a river the streams of whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. Hear me. That is the flow of the river. That is the Spirit of God. You need to flow with Him. I love what, what one servant of God, the man of God called Benehin, Pastor Benehin, he wrote a book uh, uh, several decades ago, I think in the 90s, and he, he wrote a book titled, Good Morning Holy Spirit. And you know, he said that anytime he wakes up in the morning, he greets the Holy Spirit to make sure that throughout the day, He's flowing in the move and the waves of the Holy Spirit. Hear me. If you need financial breakthrough at a time like this, you must flow in the Holy Spirit. He's the giver. He's the custodian. He's the caretaker. He's the one who is sovereignly in charge over the resources that heaven has given to others. In 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 3, the Bible talks about how God has given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. Meaning God has given us spiritual things and he has given us things that are in this life physical things according as his divine power had given unto us all things 
that pertaineth unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that called us to glory and virtue. So hear me, it is, the, it is God who has made the provision already. The provision of things that pertain to this life and things that are godly, meaning talking about physical provision talking about spiritual provision and all this the physical provision the physical provision are under the control of the holy ghost that's why you need to flow in him can i say something wherever the presence of the holy ghost is allowed to flow in any church in any family in any nation in any individual's life there cannot be prolonged poverty why because the holy ghost is a giver of the resources of heaven things that pertain to life and godliness that's why you need to walk in the spirit because these things are in the spirit that's why as you walk in the spirit you have an advantage of colliding with them when you uh, you know god has hidden our money in the spirit god has hidden our prosperity in the spirit so that as we become spiritual and walk there we get our resources you need to walk in the spirit you need that flow that flow is the terminator of every wilderness that flow is the terminator of every dry area in isaiah chapter 32 in in isaiah chapter 32 from verse 12 there about the bible talks about the dryness that was there but eventually towards verse 15 the bible declares how the, the how the wilderness will become a fruitful field and how a fruitful field will become a forest why because of the outpouring because of the flow because when i talk about the outpouring and the flow of the holy ghost they mean one and the same thing in 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 isaiah chapter 32 verse 12 let, let me see verse 12 so that we may read it from there they shall lament for the teeth talking about contrary situations talking about calamities and challenges like the ones that we are facing right now they shall lament for the teeth for the pleasant fields for for the fruitful vine they are longing for good things they are longing for financial breakthrough eh? upon the land of my people shall come up, up thorns and briars you know upon the land of god's people there shall come thorns and briars yea upon all the houses of joy in the joyous city then verse 14 verse 14 because the palaces shall be forsaken the palaces shall be forsaken the multitude of the city shall be left the forts and towers shall be for dense forever mm -hmm. shall be dense for uh, shall be for dance forever a joy of wild asses a pasture of flocks verse 15 finally what will happen until until the spirit be poured upon us from on high the pouring of the holy spirit from on high upon an individual upon a family upon a church upon a nation it is a game changer hear me all those bad things will prevail you know palaces will be considered to be dense you know the, the people shall be lamenting the land shall be full of thorns and briars uh, until the game changer arrives and who is this the game changer he is the holy ghost the holy spirit of god that's why the bible says until the spirit be poured upon us from on high and the wilderness mm, that person crying out of uh, being broken uh, that person crying of bankruptcy and the wilderness shall become a fruitful field uh, and then the fruitful field shall be counted for a forest can you imagine there's that transition and this transition if you look at it uh, it is just like the same way when i was introducing this topic uh, last sunday but one, i said uh, that there are three levels of financial operations for every believer if there is what we call less than enough there is what there is what we call just enough and there is what we call more than enough if you look at this uh, isaiah 32 verse 15 uh, you will see that when the spirit is poured uh, that person will move from being a wilderness meaning from being having less than enough and then he shall become a fruitful field that means having enough and then he shall be counted to be a forest meaning more than enough my dear viewer i want you to befriend the holy ghost this is not time for you to compromise your work this is not time for you to quench him this is not time for you to grieve him in ephesians chapter 4 verse 30 the bible talks about in ephesians chapter 4 verse 30 the bible talks about how we should not grieve the holy ghost how we should not grieve the holy ghost and grieve not the holy spirit of god whereby you are sealed the day of redemption grieve him not 
this is not time to grim him as you continue making him happy as you continue walking in purity as you continue being a worshiper you shall make him pleasant you shall make him glad and as he continue flowing in your life you are moving from being a wilderness even to being a forest and then in first Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 19 the Bible says quench not the Holy Spirit quench not the Spirit of God first Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 19 the Bible talks about how we are not supposed to quench him my dear viewer you need to flow you need to maintain a flow of the holy ghost so that as you are waking up in the morning there is a song on your lips and another one on in your heart as you are driving your car as you are entering the public service vehicle there is a song in your heart and as you do so rivers the rivers of god we have read that there is a river whose streams may glad the city of god and remember you are the city of god quench not the spirit first first thessalonians chapter 5 verse 19 hear me as you continue as you continue as you continue flowing in the spirit you engage into what you call financial mysteries you engage into what you call financial mysteries you become a wonder among your family members you become a wonder among your age mates because they don't know where you're getting your money from there's there is somebody watching me and i speak prophetically now i take my my mantle of a prophet there is somebody watching and listening to me by the end of this covid 19 you look back and cry when you see the faithfulness of god you will wonder how you ate you will wonder how you even bought a property Party, you will wonder how you even paid your house rent even built your own house because by the end of this COVID-19 the flow of the Holy Ghost shall take you from the natural into the supernatural and you will look back and glorify the mighty one of Israel because he's going to do exceedingly abundantly above all what you think or even ask or pray according to the power of the Holy Ghost that is flowing in you God will make you cry tears of joy by the end of this COVID-19. That is your prophetic, it is your now word. You will look back and wonder how you survived through without a job. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is a mystery himself. In, in you know, the other day, in John chapter 3, in John chapter 3, the Bible talks about the man called Nicodemus. He came to Jesus at night and he asked Jesus, he told him, Master, we know that you come from the Lord, because from God, because there is no one who can do the things that you do unless he has come from heaven, unless he has come from God. And he asked him, how can I enter the kingdom? And then Jesus answered him, he told him, unless you are born again. And then, you know, Nicodemus started wondering, how can I be born again at my own age? I'm a mature man, grown up man. But Jesus told him that it is not being born again according to flesh and blood but according to the spirit according to the will of god he said the things of the spirit the things of the spirit are a mystery because the spirit is like the wind which blows that nobody knows where it is blowing from and where it is going to that is the mystery of godly provision by the flowing of the holy ghost in your life at a time like this hear me the same is repeated in ecclesiastes the same mystery of the spirit is repeated in in the book of ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 5 11 verse 5 the bible talks about the mystery of the holy spirit because when you flow in him mysteriously he shall provide for you until you look at your life and wonder how did it happen as thou knowest not what is the way of the spirit as thou knowest not what is the way of the spirit know how the bones do grow in the womb you know these are mysteries of her that is with child even so thou knowest not the works of god who make it all so there is a mystery there is a mystification of your provision by the flowing of the holy spirit continue flowing in the holy spirit and you will enjoy a lot of financial breakthroughs even at a time like this befriend him be close to him walk in purity walk pleasing the lord become a worshiper and as you do so avoiding quenching him avoid grieving him as you do so when the outpouring comes oh a wilderness shall become a fruitful field and even a fruitful field shall become a forest number six fight and lay hold of your finances fight and lay hold of your finances fight and lay hold of your finances meaning now hear me my i have a great concern for the modern day church 
Because many people have not been taught how to fight for their finances. They have been taught how to fight for their marriages. They have been taught how to fight for their jobs and careers and maybe businesses. But they have not been taught quite, quite clearly how to fight for your finances. In 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 12, Paul was speaking and he said, I have fought. He said, he said I have fought a good fight. There, and he said, fight the good fight of faith. He said, fight the good. No, he will talk about fighting the good fight in 2 Timothy 4, 7. But let us look at this first. He said, he told Timothy, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. So you can fight the good fight of faith and lay hold on your money. You can fight the good fight of faith and lay hold on your finances. The church has not properly been taught that. And that is my, my request to all pastors teach our let us teach our members how to fight for our money how to fight how to face the demon the spirit of poverty and conquer it by prayer because hear me hear me if there is anything that the enemy fears he fears money in the hands of believers he fears money he knows once a believer has power the power of the holy ghost and he has the financial power and provision at hand that believer is unstoppable. Satan fears when he sees a Holy Ghost filled believer become a millionaire. That's why there is a lot of attacks. There is a lot of arsenals released from the pit of darkness against your finances. Today I came by fire in my mouth and another fire on my head and another fire in my eyes. I look at that demon eyeball to eyeball and I decree let it lose your money. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command every curse on your finances to be broken right now in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We need to teach our people how to wage war. He's saying, fight a good fight. Lay hold on eternal life. So without doing damage to the scriptures, we can say, fight a good fight. Lay hold on your money. Fight a good fight. So hear me. Let us continue fighting. Hear me. Especially against the spirit of poverty that manifests that works by two major spirits. The spirit of poverty works by two major spirits. He, it works by the spirit called emptiness. Emptiness. So that it empties you. This is the demon that uh, makes sure that every time you get some money, there will be sickness in your family. So that that money is emptied into a hospital. The reason as to why, and I said last Sunday, the reason as to why in Psalms 114, the reason as to why Jordan saw the people of God and ran back. You know, the Red Sea stood up still and the people of God had to pass. The hills and the mountains were jumping and running away in helter skelter. It is because they carried number one, the presence of God and number two, the provision of gold and silver. The Bible says in Exodus 3.21 that on that night, Moses was told by God, when the people shall be leaving the land of Egypt, God will grant favor to the women so that they will take all the gold and silver from the Egyptian women. And the reason as to why Pharaoh was following them, not to bring them back into captivity, he was following them because they had looted the whole economy. From until today, Egypt has never recovered. That's why Israel, until today, they are richer than any other nation in that Middle East, even without a lot of oil, even in the midst of calamities, even in the midst of warfare. Why? Because, because God granted them that supernatural provision on the night that they were coming up. So fight and hold, lay hold on your finances. Fight and lay hold. Now, so hear me. Many, many people have excuses and, and why they are not fighting. I'll give you three. Number one, somebody will say, I'll not fight because I'm tired of fighting. Don't get tired of fighting. Fight as you continue fighting. The Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord, he shall renew their strength. They shall walk and never get tired. They shall run and never be weary. They shall soar on their wings like an eagle. Continue fighting and at the same time have your strength renewed by the Holy Ghost. Hear me. The man called Gideon was pursuing, exhausted in Judges chapter 8 verse 4. The Bible talks about how they were in pursuit. But they were exhausted but still pursuing in Judges 8 verse 4. Judges 8.4 And Gideon came to Jordan and passed over he and the 300 men that were with him faint. They were faint. Yet 
pursuing them. So they were faint, yet they were pursuing them. Hear me, don't get tired. In Joshua chapter 8 verse 26, in Joshua, the Bible talks about Joshua and the company. 826, in, in Joshua 826. So don't get tired. Don't agree to get exhausted. Lift up your spirit. Lift up your will. So that even as you are fighting, you are getting more renewal of your strength. For Joshua drew not his heart back. He did not draw his heart back. Joshua kept on fighting. Wherewith he stretched out the spear. Until he had utterly or pro completely destroyed all the inhabitants of Ai. My dear viewer, don't say you are tired. Don't gi stop giving that excuse. Stop saying I fasted for many days. I'm now tired. Continue fasting. Finish one year. Finish seven years. Finish ten years. Finish twenty years. Finish thirty years. Hear me. And that brings me to another excuse that people give. They say they are old. Hear me. There is no age factor in God blessing you financially. He can bless you when you are young. He can also bless you when you are old. Abraham started prospering after 75 years of age. Can you imagine? Abraham started prospering after he was 75 years of age. If Abraham started prospering after 75 years of age in Kenya, he would have been long retired. He would have been long retired from employment. But hear me, age is just but a number. In the affairs of God prospering his people, in the school of prosperity, age cannot disqualify you. As a matter of fact, sometimes it is a qualifier. That's why stop saying I will not fight because I'm old. In Deuteronomy, God, in Deuteronomy that 3 verse 25, you know, talking about the man called, the tribe called Asher, the Bible says, as the days of your numbers are, so shall your strength be. The Bible says, thy shoes shall be iron and, and brass, and as thy days, you, you know, the more your days are becoming, and as thy days, so shall thy strength be. Meaning that the more older you become, the more you get stronger, stronger to fight. You can even fast for seven days non-stop. You can even fast seven dry days non-stop. You can even go for 40 days with only water. Why? Because as your days are, this is the promise in the covenant that as we grow older, the better you become. I will never forget what we used to tease in, in high school and more so in the university. When uh, we would talk with the young ladies in the university, we would brag, you know, we would brag that men never grow old. You know, just a way of, uh, you know, that comradeship and that way of young people, the way young people argue things out. And we would say, I remember we were saying that men are like wine. They get better with time. So hear me, I came to change that today. And I tell you, believers are like wine. They get better with time. That's why in, in Joshua chapter 14, verse 10, 11, 12, they are about. Caleb, the man called Caleb came to, 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 to Joshua and he said, give me this mountain. He said, that it was promised to me by Moses. He said, the same way I was strong to go out in battle 45 years ago, so am I yet today, even to go out and come back. He said, as yet as I am, I, as yet, I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. As my strength was then, even so is my strength now for war, for war, both to go out and to come in. <laughs> I want you to look at your neighbor even at home and tell your neighbor the older you become, the stronger you become. You know in the world, they say old, old age be, makes you feeble, but in the matters of faith, the older you become, the more dangerous you become. That's why continue fighting. Fight until you lay hold on your finances. Now he said in verse 12, now therefore, now therefore, give me this mountain. In our, in our topic, we can say, now therefore, give me this money. Give me my millions. Now therefore, give me this mountain, whereof the Lord speak in that day. For thou hardest in that day how the Anakims were there, and that the cities great and fenced. If, it, if so be, the Lord will be with me. Then I shall be able to drive them out, as the Lord said. He is a man who depended on the word of God and he refused to get tired. He said the same way I was strong 45 years ago. 
So counting from today, this is 1975. Somebody coming in 2020 and saying the same way I was in 1975, so am I also today, both for war to go out and come back. I came to decree and declare to you in the name that is above all other names, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that you shall be stronger for battle and you shall gain, you shall lay hold on your finances. So fight. Don't say you are old. The third excuse that people give is that I am a woman. We live in communities where women are looked down upon. We live in communities and cultures. The cultures of the world, many cultures of the world, especially African culture, where some women, women grow up feeling inferior. That's why it is only the other day that women became bishops. Until I think 80s, there were, and, and I think in Kenya, the first bishop was Bishop Margaret Wangari from Banana. I think before then, a woman could not become a reverend or even a bishop. We thank God for the wind of change that blew in the land. So hear me, don't say that I am a woman. Hear me, in, in, in Isaiah 30, 32, in Isaiah 32, verse 9, women are called upon to arise and fight. In Isaiah 32, rise up ye women that are at ease. So I'm speaking to this woman that is watching me at home. Declare three days fasting, fighting, waging war for your financial breakthrough. Declare three days prayer and fasting, for waging and fighting against the spirit of poverty. Rise up ye women that are at ease. Hear my voice, ye careless daughters. Give ear unto my speech. Continue. Many days, and yet shall be ye be troubled, ye careless women. For the vintage shall fail. The gathering shall not come. Hear me. So women are being told here that don't be at ease and don't be careless. Then the, the, the verse 11, verse 11. Treble ye women that are at ease. Be troubled ye careless ones. Strip you and make you bare. And guard your guard sacrum upon your loins. Verse, verse 12. Verse 12. They shall lament the teeth for the pleasant fields. Hear me. These now neighbors, the one that we read. So there is, there is that uh, arising that women must arise in the Bible. The Bible talks about Deborah, that how she arose in her days and she became a mighty warrior. In the same Isaiah, chapter 3, verse 16, there is a curse to every woman who refuses to fight. And that my prayer for you is that you not be cursed because you refuse to fight. The Bible talks about the, the sons of Ephraim, the children of Ephraim. In, uh, in Psalm 78, verse, verse 9, the Bible talks about how they, how they turn back in the day of battle. Though they were armed with bows and spears, the children of Ephraim refused to go to battle, though they were loaded. I want you to know, woman, you are loaded with the Holy Ghost. You are loaded with favor. You are loaded with fire. The angelic forces behind you declare war. Fight until you lay hold on your finances. So hear me, there is a curse that is declared on women if they refuse to fight in 3.16, Isaiah 3.16. We've talked already about the children of Ephraim being armed with, with bows and spear. They turned back in the day of battle. Moreover, the Lord said, because the daughters of Zion are haughty. Show me in NIV. In NIV. Show me in NIV. The Lord says, the women of Zion are haughty. Walking along with outstretched necks, you know, minding fashion too much, being at ease, like you were told in the previous place we read in Isaiah 32. He said, walking along with outstretched necks, flirting with your eyes, tripping along with your mincing steps, you know, being so conscious of your beauty, yet you are dying of poverty. There's no, there no point of you being so beautiful, yet you are a beggar. You must rise up as a daughter of Zion and wage war. Flirting with your eyes, tripping along with your missing steps. With ornaments jingling on your ankles. Ornaments jingling. Therefore, because of that, that comfort, that ease, that carelessness. Therefore, the Lord will bring sores on the heads of the women of Zion. Because they have refused to fight. They are too comfortable. God will bring souls on the heads of women of Zion. The Lord will make their scalps bald. And then verse 18. In that day, the Lord will snatch away the year. Finally, the bangles, the hair buds, the crescent, 
the necklaces. If you continue even in verse 21, you'll hear in, in the place of good smell, there shall be a stench. If you continue downwards, show me 22. Show me 22. Instead of fragrance, there'll be a stench. Instead of a sash, a rope instead of a well-dressed hair, baldness, instead of fine clothing, sackcloth, instead of beauty, there shall be branding. Why? Because women have refused to wage war. Don't say, I am a woman. You know, women cannot fast for long days. Women cannot go for dry fast. Wage war. Declare war until you lay hold on your own financial breakthrough. Finally, number seven. Number seven. Number seven. And this is the, the mother of them all. You must fund or finance the kingdom agenda. Fund or finance. Fund. F-U-N-D. Fund or finance the kingdom agenda. You must be a financier. Now hear me. God blesses us mainly for two reasons. I never forget this as long as you live. Number one, God blesses us that you may become blessing to others. God blesses you and I. So that we may become blessing to other people. In Genesis chapter 12, talking about the father of all blessings, the father, our father Abraham, Genesis 12, verse 1, 2, 3. The Bible talks about how God spoke to Abraham. The Lord God had said to Abraham, Leave your country, your people, your father's household, and go to the land I will show you. Then verse 2, 3 in a hurry, I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless you so that you be a blessing. Then verse 3. I bless those who bless you. And whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on the earth will be blessed through you. God blesses us mainly number one. So that we may become blessers to others. There is no blessing that equals when you are becoming a blessing to another person. Actually, receiving is good. But there is greater joy in giving. That's why the Bible says, Blessed is the heart that giveth more than the one that receiveth. You are blessed to become a blessing. I pray that from today, you shall look for someone to bless. I pray that from today, somebody in your neighborhood will bless God for you. Because you are a blesser. In the name of Jesus, hear me. We are living in a, in a, at a time when people are so egocentric. We are living at a time where people are so much engaged in selfish activities. You hear people stealing billions. You wonder how many houses can one live in? You hear somebody is grabbing a house from a poor woman, a poor, a, an orphan, you know, a widow. <laughs> so hear me. We are blessed to become blessing. And we are blessed to become blessing mainly to four people. Number one, to the prophets. Number two, to the widows. Number three, to, to fatherless. And then number four, to the orphans. So, and actually number five, to strangers. We are blessed so that we may bless the prophets. We may bless widows. We may bless orphans. We may bless fatherless. And bless the strangers in the land. That's why you should handle carefully anyone living in Kenya from another country. God has a special blessing resting on those who bless the strangers, those who bless prophets, those who bless widows, and those who bless fa the fatherless and orphans. So number two reason as to why God blesses us. God blesses us so that we may father, we may father, we may be stewards, especially for kingdom support. God blesses you and me so that we may be stewards for kingdom support. Hear me. God, the God, God has kingdom at his heart. At the center of God, he has the kingdom. That's why when he knows that you will mind the kingdom, when he knows that you will give towards the, the establishment of the kingdom, the planting and the establishment of the kingdom, he will bless you beyond your wildest imagination. Hear me. In the Bible, in Isaiah chapter 45, we see a man called Cyrus. He's not a Jew. He's not among the children of God. He's just, he's just a heathen. But God, because he was minding the welfare of the children of God, he's the one who sponsored Nehemiah to go back and build the wall, the broken down walls of Jerusalem. And because he was a man like that, the promise that God has given him in Isaiah chapter 45, verse 1 to 3, is very great. Because he is supporting the kingdom work. This is what the Lord says to his anointed. Can you imagine? He's calling him my anointed. To Cyrus, whose right hand I take hold of to subdue nations before him and to strip kings of the armor, to open doors before him so that gates will not be shut. When you mind the kingdom agenda, you become like a Cyrus. 
hear me in every great move of god including your own church where you fellowship including our church here and other churches where i am a bishop in every church and every move of god there are three personalities that are behind the move number one there is the preacher number two there is the the intercessor and number three there is the financier so if you're not a preacher you can choose to become a final an, an intercessor if you're not an intercessor you can choose to become a financier and by the way you can become the three of them many years ago i chose to become the three of them hear me the work of nehemiah was made simpler even when sanbarat and tobias were fighting and the arabian were fighting day and night the man finished in 52 days building that great work was not a small thing but because he had a financier he had a man behind him called king cyrus it was not difficult for him to finish the work there is no tragedy actually it is a double tragedy for a man of God to be trying to establish a work, a work like in here Kikui where we are, or in the city of Nairobi, or in the city of Mombasa, or wherever the case it might be, there is no tragedy that equals you are fighting the territorial demons, you are fighting the witches and the wizards of the area, and at the same time you are broke. There's no tragedy more than that. But when you are loaded, you know you are, your responsibility is only one, to face the demons of the land, to face the heathens of the land. It becomes easy. That's why I'm praying for pastors. Even after COVID-19, those who are struggling financially, you have the anointing on your head. You know, anointing without finances becomes annoyance. That's why the children of God, I was saying, the children of God were feared by the sea. They were feared by the Jordan. They were feared by the mountains because they carry provision and presence. So hear me. It became so easy for Nehemiah to finish in 52 days because he was not minding about the money. He was properly funded. He was properly sponsored by King Cyrus. And when you choose to become a Cyrus to a work of God, can I promise you something? Despite the hardship that is in the land, that's why I appeal to all of you, continue sending your tithes to your pastors. Continue sending your tithes to your bishops. Because as you continue funding the work of God, funding a broadcast like this, funding the broadcast that are being done by other men and women of God, God will make sure that you prosper despite of hardship. Despite the hardship that is in the land. Hear me. God tells him that I'll keep the doors open. And then he continues in verse 2. I will go before thee. I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. So that where there is crookedness financially. I will straighten those places. I will break the pieces, the gates of brass. And cut in sunder the bars of iron. I will break into pieces the gates of brass. And cut asunder the bars of iron. And the same is repeated in, uh, in, uh, in uh, Psalms 117 verse 16. That he has broken the gates of brass and he has cut asunder the bars of iron. Hear me, hear me, hear me my dear viewer. What you need to do, become a financier. In Micah chapter 4 verse 1, 2, 3. As I begin to wind up. In Micah chapter 4, 4 1, 2, 3. The Bible says, but in the last days, it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains and it shall be exalted above the hills and people shall flow into it, talking about the kingdom establishment. And many nations shall come and say, come and let us go to the mountain of the Lord, talking about the church, the house of God, and to the house of God, the house of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways and we will walk in his path for the Lord shall go forth of Zion and the word the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem, verse 3, and then we go to 13, verse 3. And he shall judge among many people and rebuke strong nations afar off, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up uh, a sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. Verse 13, because the will of God is that the church of Jesus Christ shall be the agency of building planting and establishing the kingdom so hear me anybody who goes behind that agenda must prosper financially like cyrus that's why i decree you shall be the cyrus of this generation in the name of jesus now because of what should happen in verse one two three this is the call of god arise and dress O daughter of zion for i'll make thine horn iron i will equip you for the kingdom's sake and i'll make thy hoose brass and thou shalt beat in pieces many people. You shall beat witches and wizards. So that you get your money. So learn how to wage war. Fight 
so that you may lay hold on your finances. And thou shalt beat in pieces many people. And, will, and I will consecrate their gain unto the Lord. And their substance. And I will consecrate their gain unto the Lord. Meaning, when we fight, the gain shall be unto the Lord. And their substance unto the Lord of the whole earth. My dear viewer, there is that promise that for us to enjoy financial breakthroughs, we must agree. We must agree that there is a battle to be fought. And when we fight that battle, the Lord God has promised that the kingdom shall be planted and the house of the Lord, the mountain of the Lord, shall be lifted, chief among all other mountains. And the nations of, of the world shall go there saying, teach us the laws of Jacob, even the laws of God of Israel. That is the request from the Lord. Fund, 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 finance the kingdom work. Today we are taking Holy Communion. We are taking the Holy Communion. I want you to prepare something at home. Even if it means a cup of water, just bless it. Whatever it is that you have at home, it could be a cup of tea. It could be a cup of, you know, a cup of juice. Just bless it right now. I want you to take it, whatever it is, even if it is water, call it the blood of Jesus because we are taking the communion today and we are declaring that the grace for fin staying financially afloat, the grace for staying financially afloat is coming our way as we take this communion. We are declaring that that grace is coming our way by this communion. Hear me, communion is a kingdom mystery. Jesus said, that we should remember him as much as often as we take the communion. We remember what he died for. The Bible says he became poor that we may become, we become rich spiritually and even financially. So hear me, the grace shall be made available. The grace, the grace of the finished work of Calvary shall be made available as we take the communion today. Number two, the grace, the grace for you to work for the kingdom. For the establishment of God's kingdom on earth is coming your way by this communion. So the grace of Calvary shall be made available. The grace for you to be a kingdom planter like Cyrus. So that you finance the kingdom work is coming your way. You cannot be a blesser when you are not blessed. But there is a blessing that is coming. And as we take this communion, I want us to agree that the curse of poverty is broken forever. It is broken. The curse of poverty that works with wasters and emptiers. The curse of poverty that manifests in dust, hunger, nakedness, and lack of good things is broken out of your life forever in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, And on that day, before they arrested our Lord and Savior, he lifted up the bread and he broke it. And having broken it, he said, This is my body which is broken for you. Eat it always in remembrance of me. We take the flesh of Jesus even for grace, for financial floating at a time like this. We shall float. We shall stay afloat financially. In the same manner, that same night, he lifted up the cup and said, this is the blood of the New Testament that I shed for you. Drink it always in remembrance of me. Father, we take this blood, declaring that the grace of the finished work of Calvary is coming our way, even for staying financially afloat. We decree that we are financiers. We are the Cyruses of this generation. And we decree, even by the end of COVID-19, we shall look back and marvel and even shed tears of joy when we see how much you provided for us financially. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Let's take the blood. lift up your hands wherever you are at home and tell Father let the spirit flow let the spirit flow mm -hmm. praise and worship let the living waters flow over my soul mm -hmm. hallelujah hallelujah
Yeah. The sick are getting healed at home. The discouraged are receiving the encouragement right now. Even for staying financially afloat. Don't kill yourself. Don't, don't backslide. The Lord God has done something even by this communion. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, praise and worship for the great work that you do. Thank you, CTN, the entire crew. God bless you. Thank you, all our viewers. We conclude the service by singing that song. God bless you. And until Sunday, God bless you. Remember, it is our month of supernatural supply. God bless you.